First question, I have a two and a half year old with no diagnosis. I evaluated him several times for early intervention and he was not approved. He cries very easily and spends most of his day doing this, although he does know how to talk full sentences. He also does not want to play outside if other kids are there and will cry to go in if he is outside with them. Once he is crying, he cannot soothe himself. Is this something that requires further evaluation for autism? Or is this normal childhood development? I think you're in a tricky place, okay? I wouldn't go specifically for an evaluation with autism. Mm -hmm. I would go in saying there's an evaluation for the delays that you have. There okay? we go. Because a normal two-year-old is out there trying to figure out what other kids are doing, wanting to be with them. Um, the self-soothing issue is something that all kids have to learn from. That's how they end up sleeping through the night is they have to learn how to self-soothe when they yeah. wake up. Um, being upset, it, it takes a variety of time. It's an executive function um, skill. But I would, what I would do is I'd probably go find a child, a child development specialist of some sort who actually wor does work in the field with autism, but not maybe particular autism, but maybe just generally in delays. Because one of the things that happens to many patients who walk in this office is a lot of times we end up seeing people, kids like this, who have been to maybe two, three other people and so they have a diagnosis. Usually the age is below the age of six and below, where there's just something not right and nobody can figure it out. And then they end up with kind of a host of all these little diagnoses all over the place. But I always say, don't look at the diagnoses, look at actually the symptoms. Yeah. And really, there are deficits there and you want to address the deficits. So in whatever way that you get, early intervention is the best because their, their brains are learning. Um, he's definitely capable of learning because he does play, you said. He just doesn't want to play when the other kids are out there and he talks in full sentences. But it's just really that there are some delays there and you want to check them out. And if you can give some intervention to those delays, you want it. Yeah. I love looking at it as a delay because that means that it's something that, you know, we can we can look at and catch up on and mm -hmm. improve on. Um, and I think that that's important because a lot of people will say to themselves and your family members will say, well, just wait. Just yeah. wait and see if it shakes out. But, you know, sometimes the waiting puts your child in a place of being frustrated longer, mm -hmm. um, being held back from things that might be enjoyable to them, like playing with other kids. I, I don't know why, why any, I wish we could just eliminate that sentence from early childhood discussion. Yeah. Let's just wait and see. Yeah. What's that about? <laughs> don't like that. So um, get yourself some assistance yes. and see what it is that needs to be worked on and then work on it. And it does, I, we all want to label things and put them in pretty boxes and, um, but if we just look at it, what, how, how can we help this child? Mm -hmm. A whole other conversation. Yeah, it's a whole other conversation. And it's a little bit easier, I think, so many times because autism is in the media now. People, there are so many people that just worry about it yeah. ahead of time and they think about it. And maybe that's not where your child is for the full-fledged diagnosis. But maybe there are some delays that are consistent. You don't want those delays to keep being delayed. Yeah. You know, you want to catch up on them. And, you know, if he's crying because the other kids are coming, it could actually even be a sensory thing, you know? Yeah. It could be a lo whole host of other things that are happening during that time period, but he's not able to tell you. Right. Well, and is it me that I'm the cynical person? It could be that one of those kids hurt him. Yeah, it could be you that. Know, that one kid was mean or shoved him or whatever like who knows but you don't want to leave that to fester and there are some kids who's just their personalities where I was talking to another parent about it, a typical parent yesterday and she was the psych like, well when I was a kid I liked things in order yeah. and I hated it when like kids would just spontaneously be like let's play blah 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 I'd be like right. no you said we were gonna play right Right. And so there's personality in there too. Right. But this is not a person who's on, this is a neurotypical yeah, person. Yeah, this is a neurotypical who, person. You know, has not had issues with that going into their life, but you know. But she just said it was annoying yeah. and she would just like shut down because yeah. she wouldn't, she could not understand why other kids would, you know, want yeah. to do things like that and change their plans. Yeah. And a lot of our kids on the spectrum, actually, that's the hardest part is dealing with neurotypical kids is the spontaneity. They don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, but that's not something to think about. Think, look at what he's doing doing, look at and see what delays are there, and then start addressing them. Okay. Hey, 
Hey, thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.